This morning, the text that we'll be hearing a word from is from Luke chapter 18. I will read again from the First Nations Version. This is the word of the Lord. The people were bringing their little children to Creator sets free, that is Jesus. So he would lay his hands on them and bless them. But his, father, but his followers spoke harsh words to the ones bringing them. So Creator sets free, that's Jesus, said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not turn them away. Creator's good road belongs to the ones who are like these children. I speak from my heart. Unless you welcome Creator's good road in the way a little child does, you will never walk in it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, church. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful um, for the gift of your spirit that you planted um, in our hearts. And I pray that um, the hearing of your word today will be like water um, that grows that which you've already put in us, that you would grow our roots, um, grow our branches and our leaves, that we might bear good fruit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There are only three verses in our passage for today. Three verses that prompt a big lesson. I speak from my heart, unless you welcome Creator's good road in the way a little child does, you will never walk it. When she was little, my, my daughter uh, Natalie loved to learn new words. She would listen closely to adults and the vocabulary that they used. And if there was a word that was new to her, she would ask me the meaning of it and then begin to start using it in her everyday vernacular. And as of a two and a half year old, using words like spectacular, bamboozle, and epiphany wasn't cute enough that she could only partially pronounce the new words filled me with much merriment, or merdment, as Natalie would say. Because hearing her joyously and confidently use her partially learned, partially pronounced vocabulary was so stinking adorable, I would never correct her. So I would let her walk around exclaiming things like, my favorite restaurant is Bopplebee's, or, Mom took me to the straw baby's patch. Well, this endearing habit came to a screeching halt one day when we went to Target. Her grandmother and I took Natalie there to shop for bedding for her first big girl bed. When we walked into the bedding department, my adorable little munchkin shouted, Mom, look at all of these bed sprouts. <laughs> well, there were a few other customers nearby who heard her and started laughing. And Natalie, being so young, didn't understand why they were laughing at her, and she burst into tears. I tried explaining to her that she had been saying some words a little uniquely, and that adults just thought it was super cute. That's why they were laughing. Well, not surprisingly, this did not comfort her. She couldn't grasp the idea that people could laugh at her in a way that was endearing and not shaming. And when you think of it, you can't blame her for not even wanting to understand. Because the bigger truth was, I had wronged her and it hurt her little heart. So I sat there in the bedding department of Target on top of a bed spread, wiping the red hot tears off my daughter's cheeks. Mommy, why didn't you teach me the words right? That was dish honest. 
kids have such a pure black and white way of looking at relationships, life, and God. They believe it when we tell them God can move mountains, that God loves them completely and fully and hears their prayers. While our adult, nuanced, and complicated ways of holding paradox is a great attribute in spiritual maturity, at the same time, our hearts get beat up over the years, and the calcification makes it oh so hard for us and our own strength to believe God can move mountains, that God loves us completely, and that God hears our prayers. How on earth do we get from here where our jaded selves are now back to the playfulness, honesty, and emotions we all had ready access to when we were children? How do we get back to our emotional self the hour before our collective target betting trips? I've thought a lot over the years about that moment with Natalie, about how I needed a parenting check, yes, but also about her feelings, about her, her pure hurt and anger over being laughed at and her inability to do the things we adults do when we've been injured, like laugh it off, ignore it, or give a sarcastic remark, anything but let people see our pain. She simply felt her feelings and expressed to me that I hurt her. Jesus said, I speak from my heart. Unless you welcome creator's good road in the way a little child does, you will never walk it. And there are days when the only thing we can welcome the only thing we can muster up hope for is just to bury ourselves in bed for a few days. Any kind of walking feels impossible. Because if we have any chance of getting to that road, Jesus, you are going to have to carry us. You will need to do the walking. Yesterday, at the All Rejoice Together conference, Children's ministry director Jetty led us through a godly play story about the parable of the mustard seed. For those of us who've been in the church more than a few years, how exciting it was to see Flanagram again. Anyone else remember that? Is that just me? Well, so Jetty used flannel and Velcroed wood cutouts to show us a teeny tiny uh, mustard seed planted by a person, and then that teeny tiny seed grew into the largest shrub in the garden. It became a home and shelter for nesting birds. What was once microscopic, slowly over time became lush and full, so big that you couldn't ever even imagine that it was once a little seed. It's such a powerful picture of faith how all that is needed to be giving, loving disciples is just a couple millimeters of potential. During our small group session, we engaged the story creatively, excuse me, creatively in painting, coloring, and Play-Doh. And it hit me, just like our faith, watered by the Holy Spirit, how it grows and blossoms, so does another kind of tree, a sad, struggling tree that feels far away from hope, far away from flourishing, far away from God. It is a tree that feeds on our core needs and feelings, or lack thereof. We all start out with seeds of joy and anger and love and sadness as kids, we all plant them in the soil of experiences, but many of them painful. Experiences like the betrayal of your best friend dropping you for someone else. Experiences like being teased for being a crybaby. 
Experiences like people laughing at you at Target. Experiences of trauma like physical abuse, neglect, or dysfunction that nurture a necessary self-protection of our feelings in order to survive. In that soil, this tree grows tough and stunted, its bark thick and impenetrable. Instead of fertilizer to nurture it, this tree sucks the world dry, looking for love and affirmation. Thirsty for water and sun, instead it disassociates through overeating or too much TV. It feeds on hours upon hours of video games, becoming the class clown, bullying, and even lying as ways to keep those awful feelings of unworthiness down in shallow roots, preventing the growth of great green leaves. Years and years of keeping those hard feelings at bay eventually bears the misshapen fruit of depression, loneliness, and even addiction. I speak from my heart. Unless you welcome Creator's good road in the way a little child does, you will never walk it. How did we get here? How did our hearts get so far off the road? Is there a map to bring us back? How do we find the honesty, suppleness of heart, hope, and faith of little kids again? My, oh my. If being honest with God and each other about who we are and what we need is our on-ramp to the good road, how will we ever be able to recalibrate our internal GPS? How do we create community when we are jaded, hurt, and beat up adults? Is our small, stunted tree without hope? Well, Jesus teaches us that it's never too late to become a kid again. God is a master gardener. You might remember some of the stories from the same section of Luke from the past few weeks. It is all about finding that good road of the creator. Luke teaches us specifics in how we nurture qualities that grow us and empower us to love God, our neighbor, and even ourselves. Qualities that bear fruit even when we feel our growth is stunted. A little over a month ago, we examined faith of a mustard seed. In a world that loves shiny perfection, God calls us to love our world in small and learning ways, even when we don't have ourselves figured out. All that's required is just a little faith. Then we engaged the story of Jesus healing the ten lepers and learned how powerful gratitude is in growing that faith. A couple weeks ago, we studied the persistent widow ability, an act of faith, even an act of defiance in the face of mountains of impossibility. We put our notes on this tree like little leaves of faith. The challenges on these notes might feel overwhelming and even impossible, but we mustered the little bit of childlike faith in us to trust that God is helping us grow and wants nothing more than to give us healing. And this small, defiant act of faith is available to all of us today. It is our welcome of the Creator's good road in the way of a child. It is never too late, church. There is healing for us. God will take whatever tree we've grown and graft. Our branches, our challenges, our brokenness, our dead ends, right into the tree of God's own heart, right into the life of God's church. 
It's never too late. Bring your whole messy self right to the tree of life and let the healing begin. Amen. Let us pray. God, we have so much to confess. There are seasons and there are days where we think, where do we even begin? Which would you like to address first? But today we confess that we need you. That we need your spirit to fill us both with encouragement and conviction. We need to be held so that we can feel safe and begin to be filled with hope that you have us. That you want our healing. That we can trust you. And so um, we take just this minute to listen to our hearts, to listen to where you would have us start. God, help us to trust again. Help us to love again. Help us to receive love. Help us to experience your love that is lavish and all-encompassing and good. Amen. Friends, you are forgiven. You are set free. In God's spirit, you are reoriented to walk the path of God in healing. You have been grafted into the life of God to begin loving God and your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.